I would agree with Polly Dice on a few things and that being that generalizations aren't right and that not everybody on the left think exactly the same. There are many times where a talking point from the far right slowly seeps its way into the mainstream conservative libertarian movement. One of the more recent examples of this is the insult NPC. For those of you who don't know, NPC is video game terminology for a character that is not playable and just does whatever the game programs them to do. The implication of this meme is that those of us on the left are intellectual clones of each other. We live in an echo chamber where we all think of the same things and all make the same arguments. So the non-playing characters, I don't know exactly where it came from. I haven't been paying much attention. Uh, I think that there are people on the left that do genuinely disagree with one another on certain things, especially social policies. But I can kind of understand from both sides. But of course it should go without saying that both sides make original arguments and both sides are highly susceptible to groupthink. I can fully understand the whole groupthink. I had people, even on the Brexit movement, who were claiming that I'm an extremist simply because I support the free market and these were the same people who claimed to be so anti-socialist and they were supporting things like the NHS etc. I don't think they fully understand what socialism is and what it is not because you can't claim to be so anti-socialist and support all of these things but in general we know we live under a mixed economy. There are only two genders! Genetic abnormalities don't mean sex exists on a spectrum. Critiquing Islam isn't hate speech. Donald Trump is your president. Clint Eastwood is a genius. Did you catch it? He's accusing left-wing NPCs of being identical, pre-programmed, zombie-like bots while using copy-pasted right-wing talking points. I do understand the whole groupthink thing and it's, it's wrong. For me, it was independent thought, and that's how I reached the position that I did. So I don't apply to this, and many people who support the free market don't apply to that because we reached the position that we did through independent thought, and the only way you could reach supporting free market capitalism is by independent research, because it's not widely taught, it's not something taught in these universities, and that's the difference. But we all have to learn from somewhere and you have to gather information from somewhere anyway. So I think that just it applies to people in general. We all know how much Venezuela, the right Venezuela, is about Venezuela, every single Venezuelan goddamn Venezuela. So instead of that, I'm going to talk about the incredible degree of intellectual diversity on the left. Of course, there is some level of groupthink, and nobody can deny that for any side. But when it comes to the majority of issues, there is an abundance of arguments and viewpoints coming from the left. Pretty much everyone on the right has the same thing to say about socialism and the free market. But we can't even agree on what our vision of socialism is, much less whether or not it's good. Some of us just want regulated capitalism, others want social democracy, others want democratic socialism, some of us are communists, anarchists, or both. There are definitely plenty of issues where we generally share common talking points. That's obvious for any political group. You know, like climate change, healthcare, gun control, we use a lot of the same rhetoric, but in terms of the actual policies that we want to take, we're all over the place. This is one thing that I would disagree with because not all people on my position make the same arguments and also the very fact that there are many people who do claim to support the free market and capitalism in general. Truthfully, they don't really fully comprehend that of capitalism. Take for example, Donald Trump supporters who are in full support of protectionist tariffs. What on earth has that got to do with free market capitalism? Not all agree on the, that position and I would f be first to defend Polydice on the argument that yeah, not all think the same. But the problem with that of the left is that, again, you may support such a position of libertarian socialism or democratic socialism, but subconsciously you end up supporting more or less the same thing. Much like that of the example of anarchist Catalonia that descended into this so-called anarchy and immediately after it a terror group formed. Although I've mentioned why democratic socialism cannot be democratic and why libertarian socialism cannot be libertarian, as a result of what they're supporting economically, the inevitable consequence is in order for them to reach their goal, regardless of what that may be, they're going to have to get the government there 
to do it for them. As history proves, the government j doesn't just wither away. It gains more and more and more power, and you end up with the regimes much like the Soviet Union, where it becomes totalitarian. Now, you, you may then argue and say, well, hold on a second, there are people who do support this of um, the Scandinavian economies. But those countries went against their very belief. They started supporting that of more of right-wing policies. You may, you know, support these things, but subconsciously you end up going down the road of more or less the same thing. And so that's why I can reason with those people who say, well, Venezuela in terms of socialism. But I will agree, many of these people contradict themselves. Because on one hand, they're saying, well, look at the failure of Venezuela with all the food shortage problems and the hyperinflation, etc. Look at the failure of socialism. And they claim to be so anti-socialist, but there they are, making up excuses for the British NHS with massive big long waiting lines, with the surplus waste every single year, the misallocation of valuable scarce resources, the shortage of hospital beds, and they say, well, that was all due to an immigration crisis. No, that's been around even long before I've lived. This, this has been around since the inception of the NHS. In contrast, there have been times where I've made a video debugging right-wing talking points, and then I'll get comments from people who, without even watching the video, comment those exact same arguments. I know this isn't unique to any one side, but when the other side is using literal bots, we're not the ones you should be calling NPCs. Even if you look at politicians, you find a much more divided left than right. During the 2016 election cycle, there were 16 major GOP candidates and 5 major Democratic candidates. Now, if you took Donald Trump and Rand Paul out of the equation, was there really much of a difference between the other 14 candidates? Meanwhile, if we look at the candidates from the 2016 Democratic primaries, we see completely different, unique perspectives. Jim Webb was a moderate, kind of conservative Democrat, Lincoln Chafee was a strict non-interventionist, Hillary Clinton was a moderate social progressive, Bernie Sanders was a groundbreaking social democrat, and Martin O'Malley tried to strike a balance between Hillary and Bernie. And by the way, the Hillary and Bernie wings of the party are still divided. This is where our thriving intellectual diversity becomes a problem. With a few exceptions like the Never Trump movement, the right wing generally rallies behind their guy, while the left often rejects people as being insufficiently leftist. This is one thing that I would agree upon, there are people who just buy into everything of what their politician says. You could look at the Scottish independence movement and they just buy into what they say just because they agree upon the position that they stand for. For example, the Scottish independence movement, many of them just nod their head and agree with everything that Nicola Sturgeon says. In other words, many people just don't have the knowledge they're easily led up the garden path and therefore they can get away with saying anything and making all the promises and it's why people end up voting for them and then they wonder why they never got what they voted for. As it articulates the very real fact that many of the deluded people that we interact with on a daily basis seem to have a contrived worldview and have been programmed to have the same responses, the same ideas, the same beliefs and act in the exact same way. And more to the point, as some have argued, that these individuals appear to have no souls. Really, talk to a progressive. We have souls, or well, to the extent that a soul exists. There are people on the far right who literally advocate for completely isolating yourself from progressives. For their Just Do It campaign, then obviously you give your Nike shoes to, to the homeless people, and then you... Uh, you, if someone in your friendships, your families or whatever has the Nike shoes, you sit down and talk with them and say, this is like horribly offensive, this is nasty, do you see what they're doing? You just talk to people and then if it's some friend or acquaintance and they're like, you get into this and they won't change their mind based on reason and evidence, you cut them the hell out of your life. I think that this nonsense is an important look into the minds of the reactionary far right. I would agree with what you're saying because it's not a nice thing that there are these generalizations and they say that you shouldn't, you know, be friends with anybody that you disagree with and it all becomes this group thing and you all go into their one group. Yes, there are disagreements, but I don't agree with what things like that of Pigeon Speak says because I don't think that's the right attitude. I will try to get on with everybody and I will treat everybody equally the same. Robert Burns was one of my uh, strongest influences. I actually, you know, got that for that reason. Um, I've had it for a number of years now. Uh, it's basically all 
of these CDs. I used to listen to it like every day, I kid you not. And one of the things that I would agree with him upon is he says, What though in Hamley fair we dine, we're hoddin' grey and all that. Ye fools are silks and knaves are wine, a man's a man for all that. For all that and all that, their tinsel show and all that. The honest man though e'er say poor is king of men for all that. And essentially what he was saying, just like tinsel, it's all but for show, but that's all it is. The clothes that you wear, you may think you are something. The wine that you may drink, you may think you are something because of that. Or those type of people who think they are something because of the mater material possessions that they may own. But the true measure of man is not basically down to what he owns. The true measure of man is his character. In other words, I will treat everybody equally the same. What I'm saying is, I don't care what your views are. I don't care whether you support communism or anything, for that matter. I'm not going to judge you because of your political views. And unfortunately, there are too many people like that. Anyway, I don't know what your personal opinion is. If you agree with me, you know, comment in the comment section below. If you like the video, give the video a thumbs up. Share the video. And of course, thank you for watching. And I shall talk to you later. Cheers.